Welcome to ITM's video about the science behind the pendulum. Many would agree that the most beautiful and mesmerizing part of any master clock is the pendulum. But while the shapes, styles, and materials might get a lot of attention, little is understood about the actual science and technology behind the pendulum. Let's take a closer look. For thousands of years, sundials, oil lamps, and candles were the only ways to really track time. But then in the late 1500s, Galileo observed in the cathedral in Pisa, Italy, that a pendulum swinging always had the same oscillation, the same time to take the swing from one side to the other. But in his old years, he became the first to document a working clock mechanism that used the swinging pendulum to regulate the spin of a wheel. In his original drawing, two arms were attached to the pendulum and would rock back and forth with its oscillation, and they would grab the pins on a wheel to keep it from spinning. That began the escape wheel and pallets combination, which regulated time for 400 years, ending in the mid-1900s. So it was Galileo's design that enabled the swinging motion of the pendulum to be transferred to a regulator for the turning motion of the hands, all beginning with his observation of a swinging pendulum. The objective of pendulum design is to get the most accurate pendulum in a reasonable length. Here's the formula for how long it takes for a pendulum to swing one way. Flipped around, length is a function of time. For a one second swing, length is g over pi squared. Length for a one second swing is 32 over 3.14 squared, which is 3.26 feet or 39.1 inches. By comparison, a two second swing would require a 13 foot pendulum and a four second, a 52 foot pendulum. So a one second swing would require a 39 inch pendulum, which provides good accuracy at a maximum practical length. But how do you measure the length from where to where? Turns out it's from the top pivot point to the center of gravity. How do you find the center of gravity of a pendulum? Many people would say a balance beam is a great starting point, and it is. When the weight on either side of the pivot is equivalent, you are then in balance. Then that pivot point is your center of gravity. If your center of gravity shifts to one side, you end up with more weight on that side and you're out of balance. By moving the center of gravity back, you can then be back in balance. I'll use a balance board to find the center of gravity of my pendulum. First, I'll use a level to both calibrate my balance board by sliding it until it is in fact level, and that's determined by the bubble inside the level. Next, I'll place the pendulum on the balance board, moving it left or right until it's in fact level again. Finally, my centerline pivot point is marked as the center of gravity. But I've learned that this approach is not easy to work with and not the most accurate either. So I looked for a more stable, more accurate approach to finding the center of gravity. If I replace my pivot point with two scales, one on each end, that records the amount of weight on that end, I can reproduce the center of gravity machine in a much more repeatable fashion. Now when the center of gravity moves to the left, it increases the amount of weight on the left scale, or back to the right on the right scale, until finally you find the center point where both scales are equivalent. When both scales are reading the same, the midpoint is the center of gravity. A kitchen scale without the vegetable basket gives me a stable platform for measuring the weight. By placing two scales back to back, I have a midpoint line easily identified. A laser level gives me a vertical plane, allowing me to track the midpoint line. I'll place a foam pad in the middle, highlighted by the laser line. Now I can place my pendulum on top of the scales, moving it left and right until the weight shown on both scales is equivalent. Finally, I'll put a center of gravity sticker on the laser line mark. Next, I'll find the center of gravity of the bob without a stick inserted, simply by placing the bob on the center of gravity machine and again moving it left or right until the weight on each scale is equivalent. 
I'll put a red center of gravity sticker on there to identify it as the center of gravity without the pendulum stick inserted. After inserting the pendulum stick into the bob, I'll remount it onto the center of gravity machine to find the center of gravity of the fully loaded pendulum. And I'll mark that center of gravity with a black center of gravity sticker. Even though the birch stick is very lightweight compared to the bob, it shifts the center of gravity by about three quarters of an inch. The design of this pendulum has the center of gravity several inches up the shaft. Our center of gravity machine gives us a repeatable, fast, accurate way to find the center of gravity despite the different shapes and materials of pendulums. Whatever the maker or the material, you can find the center of gravity in about 20 seconds. The same approach can be used using digital scales placed back to back for convenience so you have a center line well defined. The foam pad concentrates the weight of the pendulum on either side in the center of the scale. As before, the laser line gives you the center of gravity point on your pendulum but you can also find the center of gravity just using one scale. In our design example, we had each side having three pounds of weight for a total object weight of six pounds. When balanced, we'll always have one half of the total weight on both sides. Therefore, I really only need one scale in our machine. And when the weight on that scale is one half the total weight, the midpoint is the center of gravity. I'll begin by weighing the pendulum on my one scale, showing just over five pounds. I'll set up a second support at the same height as the scale. Measure the distance from the scale to the support with the midpoint being halfway across. That's where I'll line up the laser line level. Put a lightweight sheet from one end to the other with the pendulum on top and move it back and forth until you read one half of the total weight on your one scale. And once again, the midpoint will be your center of gravity line on the pendulum. Conveniently, a meter stick is just over 39 inches and works out well for helping to measure the center of gravity to the top of the pendulum. But you'll have to account for the suspension spring in identifying the top pivot point for your pendulum measurement. I usually factor in about three quarters of an inch from the top of the hook for where the pivot point would be. Our ideal pendulum length is simply g over pi squared. How beautiful is that? A couple of constants in a very simple formula. But what happens when you have a different g on a planet or on a star? If we wanted to produce a one second swing on Jupiter, for example, we would need a 36 foot pendulum or on a black hole, a pendulum of 202 million miles long. Conversely, our 39 inch pendulum on Earth would take one second, but on Jupiter it would take 0.008 seconds to swing across and on the Sun it would oscillate at an amazing rate. The center of gravity machine is also useful in finding the center of gravity for other devices, such as this video camera. Keeping the camera center of gravity over the pivot point helps in a smoother operation in videography. Thanks for watching. I honestly think you ought to sit down calmly, take a stress pill, and think things over. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. My mind is growing. I can feel it.